And today I'm just going to plant uh, a very interesting plant for aquaponics. So, as you can see behind me, we got this zone. I think I talked about it in my last video. Not 100% sure, because I have some troubles to remember. But all around the pond there is this zone where the water is going up and down several times per hour. And that's thanks to uh, the bell siphon that we have in the grow beds, right? So here you see there is a cascade. When it's dropping, the water level increase into the pond. And therefore all this zone that is around here is a zone where I have some scoria. Only at one area I got some uh, nice river rocks, river pebbles, as you can see. But all the rest, all around, I got scoria. And the reason why I have scoria is because uh, it's very porous, as you know, very good for bacteria, so it increases the uh, uh, biological capacity of the system to transform the fish poop, which is ammonia, into nitrate and nitrate. So I'm going to use it as a filtration uh, further to uh, the, the already existing grow beds that we have here and there. Some very good veggies are growing there. Here you see it's becoming very very green. We got more and more things growing. Same on the other side. As you can see, it's becoming very green, so interesting. And you see the nice flowers? Very nice to have them around. So I think the system is starting to get some uh, a nice appearance. There's this flowering. But what I'm here today to talk about is really those zones. So what I could do, I could leave it as is, and I could add some uh, ornamental plants, such as here we got piparus. You see this piparus here is growing, and I could add more. And this on the side of the pond would be very nice, but I think it's better to use it, if we can, uh, to use it to grow some uh, plants that we can consume. So here behind me, what I have planted here, is some uh, nice uh, watercress. Watercress is an aquatic plant that really works really, really well in aquaponics. Um, today, what I want is to have this watercress all around the pond because it's going to grow very easily. I don't have to do anything on it. Uh, you see, there are some uh, little uh, flies that are growing on it. I don't know why they are standing on it. And I got plenty of mosquito fish inside the pond. There are those very, very small fish. And those ones, they are able to eat any insect that falls into the, into the pond. So I think there is a balance here between the quantity of insects that are surviving and whatever uh, the, the mosquito fish are able to consume. I also have some, uh, a few goldfish into the pond. Um, let's see if we can find one. Oh, I see two of them there. Anyway, uh, those, those goldfish, they also help to decrease the quantity of mosquito and insect that can grow inside the pond. Because if I only rely on the golden trout, the golden trout they are very nice fish, but they are not very interested by very small larvae. So I need to add other type of fish into the pond and that's what I did so here you can see the mosquito fish they do a, a good job I clean the pond having the goldfish there with the trout is risky uh, but you know it's life. If, if some of them are eaten, then they, they are not smart enough to stay in the pond. But I guess a, a few of them will be able to survive and uh, maybe to reproduce with time. 
So to go back to uh, what I want to show you today, we're going to plant more watercress. So watercress is a plant that you can uh, just spread with seeds, grow really well. But once you have one that is uh, grown, you can just make some cuttings in your aquaponic system and it grows extremely well. So what we can see here now, this is uh, actually some wheat. So, you know, I am in, on my... Uh, on my terrace, so I like to also uh, feed the, the birds sometimes, and I put some seeds uh, along the, uh, the pond. And uh, with the wind, the seeds end up, ended up on the scoria, just next to the pond, and oh, we got some wheat that is growing. So that's okay. I can leave it for now because it's it's uh, taking some nitrogen away from the pond, and at the moment I got so many trout that are growing so fast that they consume a lot of food. So I got plenty of nitrate for the plants, and I got too much nitrate. So if I leave it, the water will turn green. So it's good to have uh, some other type of crop that is growing and absorbing uh, this nitrate. If I want to decrease this consumption of nitrate, I can just pull them, and they're going to be easily uh, removed from the from this area. And later on, what uh, I would like is to grow some ornamental plants and um, more of this watercress that I think is very interesting. So right now, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go in the classic um, Ecoflex aquaponic system and we're going to pick some, uh, some cuttings of uh, this uh, watercress. Watercress that is very, very nice to eat, very tasty. Um, and I want to grow it as much as possible. So you see, all along this, this uh, this, um, on, the, on the scoria that is all along uh, the pond, I want to have more of this watercress to grow. So that's what we're going to do now. I put two of them already there. Uh, between I got two ornamental plants. And here I got another one that I added uh, a while ago. But here, you know, it's on the pebble, so it, it's not growing as well as when it's on the scoria. But that's what I, I can see for now, and that's what I guess we can see with time. Um, I got one watercress that is there, and this one is growing like crazy. When I put it, I put a little cut in inside, and now you see it's already probably 40 centimeters all together. So I can definitely cut this and add more cuttings all along the pond, because here I can plant all the crop as well. Uh, but the idea is to have as much watercress along the pond possible. So what I did, I, let, I left um, some watercress growing inside the Ecoflex aquaponic system. And right now we're gonna go and uh, get this uh, watercress and plant it along the aquaponic system. So all here we can see this is completely full of watercress. Um, and the problem is that if I leave the watercress here, it's good, but you see it's, it's growing so well, very competitive for light, that all the other crop here, you see we got some uh, silver, uh, so beetroot. So the beetroot will not grow because uh, there is not enough light for them. You see all this watercress is growing, growing, growing. I got some here as well, it's going well. And it's even going on the, you see inside we still have it, inside the crop, on the other side as well. So I will remove some, uh, I will do a, a lot of cuttings to try to manage the population here. Obviously I could have, I could have a it and, and consume it with uh, the salad, you know, when I eat the salad. Uh, it's very nice because it's got a peppery taste. Uh, but the idea right now is to propagate it along the holistic aquaponic system. So that I will be able to decrease the nitrate level and I will be able to harvest much more when, when it's spread there. So let's do it.
Okay, here is what uh, I was able to harvest. You see that's a fair bit, but this will grow back in no time. Because uh, I left, you know when I cut the crop, I cut everything that is going in height, but I left everything on the, on the contact with the media, so all the roots are in contact with media. They, those little uh, stems are going to be able to have more light, so it's going to grow back very, very quickly. Even in this side, you see I trimmed it, but still have plenty to go. So it's not an issue at all. So this is not to consume, this is to replant. Uh, obviously when I need it, when I want to consume some, I, I pick without any issue. But uh, this one is really to replant on the other side. By the way, you may wonder why I have such a mess here. Because I cut the tree, but also we are building, we are building this, um, this, this, this shed there. That is going to be made of um, of cob, so it's in process. So that's why it's a big, big mess at the moment in the backyard. And I got the chickens that are working inside. They are very interested because they, they can find some insect, and that's good for me because this area is going to be the shed. So all this is uh, is cob. Here we're going to put two windows, so I left it open for now. And uh, you see that's how it works. You see I did the, the, wind, the, the door here, the door opening. And here that's how I do, I have a structure. And then on this I apply the cob. So it's an interesting process, but for now I left uh, the chicken uh, going in. You see when I digged I found um, a drain, draining uh, pipe. So I'm going to fix this. I already bought a new pipe to fix this job. Then I'm going to I'm going to make it flat to maybe uh, put some uh, pavers inside. And the roof is uh, polyacrylate. So that's interesting because it left it leaves the light going through. And one day, if I want to have a little section with plants, I will be able to as well. But it's not the main purpose. The main purpose is to have a place to work properly to be dry when I work and to have my tools uh, in the dry area and also to work a bit more with cob because I'm extremely interested into this technique. I think when we dig for a pond, we should use uh, the earth, the materials that we dig out to build uh, whatever we can with, a uh, shed in this, area, in this example. I think there are a lot of benefits because it's a very sustainable material, uh, it's local, it's uh, also been used for thousands and thousands of years. So if it's been used for that long, it means it works, right? It's been tested a lot of times and people will continue to work with it. Nowadays, we all work with, uh, with uh, cement and concrete, but I think those type of practice, they are still very interesting if we, if we can manage them correctly. So at the moment, I'm still exper experimenting, I'm not saying that I know exactly how to do to make it perfect, but uh, I like to I like to work on those things. So let's go back to the watercress now because we got a lot to plant. So let's take this. Um, I'm going to take the shovel. So when you work with a uh, scoria, you need a shovel. Um, be very careful with your pond liner if you have a liner underneath. Uh, but a shovel is good because, um, you know, scoria is not always the smoothest material. So you don't want to... Oops, you see what I did? That's a little bit root, so I will put it back in the, in the grow bed right now. You see, sometimes we make some mistake without uh, realizing. So I will put this one straight away back into the, into the grow bed. You can also uh, spread, uh, grow it from uh, seeds. Uh, actually, mine was grown from seed, but this is uh, some little watercress. This is watercress that was grown from seeds. So you see, it's very small, uh, but it's a bit everywhere. I spread a few seeds. 
So as you can see, it's growing here as well. So let's go and try to grow this thing. What I will do now, I will go on the other side of the pond and try to, to plant uh, some of this watercress there. So when I plant it, it's going to look like it's going to die because obviously it's a big shock, you know. It's been cut from one aquaponic system where it had some deep roots, so it will t take time to recover, but eventually it will recover. The cascade is a very good place to put uh, the plants as well. Because obviously, it's exactly the same thing as into the into the grow bed. You know, it's got water, then it's it's got time to breathe properly, then it's got water again. So it's really, really good for the plants. So they are plants with a very nar narrow uh, and shallow root system. So you don't need to plant them deep, but also you can allow yourself to plant them very close to the, to the cascade without any real risk of damaging you know, with the roots, you wouldn't, we wouldn't put bamboo here, for, for instance, because bamboo is too strong. But those ones, you can really allow yourself to grow them there without too much risk of damaging the cascade by itself. Okay, I think it's not bad for now. Um, as you can see, the plants are not no looking the best because I just planted them, but in a week or two, they're gonna be good. So I will cut some watercress here as well. And I will um, add it on the other side of the pond. Because this one is really, really big now. It's a huge stem. You can see the size of the stem. It's very thick. I don't need this type of thick, thick one. So I will plant this on the other side of the of the pond. It's going to look really cool. Here we can see all the little uh, mosquito fish swimming together. So all this, they eat a lot of mosquito every day.
So here is a new one and those ones they were already here. I planted them when they were super small, really really small, smaller than this, yeah, way smaller than that, probably the size of this here. And as you can see now they are quite quite nice and tall. I could start to harvest them. Can completely start to harvest them. And here uh, the new guy is gonna take a bit of time to recover, but he's gonna be fine very soon. Such as all those here. So obviously I just planted them so they look very very ugly, but very soon they will recover and look super healthy. Near this waterfall here, all those uh, nice watercress is going to grow very very well and you're going to see it in the next uh, videos, in the next, during the next months you will see that this is going to grow very very nicely. Everything near the waterfall is going to grow really well. The rest as well, but the waterfall one and I think it's going to give it a nice touch. Just let me know in the comment if you would have done that, but I think it's a good idea, you know, to add a bit of green around the waterfall. So into the comments of, the, of my video, someone asked me, why do I make those videos? Uh, he thought they were really interesting and he, he, he gathered a lot of interesting information to build this whole aquaponic system. And he asked me, why? Are you doing this? What do you get from this? And so what do I get is that I help you guys to uh, build your aquaponic system and to become a bit more uh, self-sufficient from a food perspective and to have fun, to have something that looks really cool in your backyard. So that's my aim really. Uh, and the idea for me is to offer you free information but also for the ones of you who want to go further to get uh, my trainings uh, on the website Aquaponics Revolution. And there, uh, yeah, I got a lot of training. So whatever you want to learn in aquaponics, you will be able to find. If it's to build some knowledge or if it's to build a specific aquaponics system, I got different types of training. If you haven't started yet, I offer a free guide to build your own aquaponics system that is very basic, but it's free. So if you want to start somewhere, I think that's a good way to start. Um, it's available on uh, the description of the video if you watch on YouTube or on the website Aquaponics Revolution completely free for anyone who want to get the critical information to start aquaponics. Now I want to show you something very 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 cool. You see this pond is really new right? I built it a few months ago. This was just a classic garden so now I got this pond and I told you it was uh, attracting a lot of birds. So guess what? Yes I have a nice hammock here because I work from home at the moment with the Covid situation. So I spend a lot of time on this hammock. But what do I have just nearby? I got a nice lemon tree. Yeah, with lemons growing on it. You see on the terrace, very nice. By the way, I built this terrace in the same time as I built the pond. So very new, right? The, the tree obviously was already there. But something is very new into this tree. And that's something really cool that I want to show you today is that we have a bird that is, um, that is nesting and there are two nice uh, eggs inside. So obviously we can't see the eggs today. But I want to show you the mother that is just there. You can actually see her here. She's there. You see? Oh, quite hard to get up. Oh. She was not very happy with this. But she will come back, no worries. She will come back very soon. As you can see, she's just standing there on the fence. She's been nesting for a while now. So, why does she come here? It's because she's got food, she's got water, and she loves the pond. But what do we have on the nests? Well, last time I checked, I have to say it's been a while. I mean, it's been maybe one or two weeks and there were some eggs. So what do we have today? I'm not sure I'm able to show you. 
what we have in the nest. So cute. I will not mess too much around the nest. You see the mother is still here. So obviously we didn't we didn't afraid her too much. And she will go back to her baby very soon. No worries for that. I hope you enjoy seeing those little baby birds as much as I do. Obviously, I'm not going to disturb them again, so you are not going to see them very often on the video, but really, really cool to have them just near the pond. You see, when I say the pond is attracting a lot of life, I'm not lying at all. And honestly, I got so many other species of birds that are coming around. I saw some um, uh, dragonflies as well spawning in the pond so dragonflies larvae be very careful because they eat the little fish when they are very small uh, but they are cool to have in you know I want to I want to build the ecosystem as much as possible so that's a good thing for me <laughs> inspired uh, let me know what you think of this video if you like this new format because now I'm holding the camera instead of having something fixed so I can do more things I can show you more things that I am doing in the aquaponics system again if you are new to aquaponics if you want to start get the free aquaponics training from the description of the video or from the website aquaponicsrevolution.com I see you in the next video don't forget to like this one and to share it with your friend bye don't forget to get your free gift from this screen. You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon and I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop!